I will be reacting to your raids of my Dreadshore base and improving my base accordingly to make it even more deadly. You can rate my new base, Solville, in the social raids in Meet Your Maker before watching the rest of this video. Ooh. What? How did I trigger that? Oh, I think I get it. Make sure to visit the link in the description below to find out more about Meet Your Maker and thanks to the sponsors of this video, Behavior Interactive, the developers of Meet Your Maker. Previously in Soulville, when you actually impact, then the time activates and then it blows up. And then we move on to the new guard being the Ravager, but new custodian being Nautilus. And this character is based on defensive mechanics, the Sentry Beam. In an open room like this, it gets kind of crazy as you can see. But the best thing is, your Arc Barrier can protect you. Notice the trap's active, doesn't realize the next point. He doesn't and he dies. This place is clever. Yeah, it's pretty cute. Uh, ah. <laughs> okay, okay. I never thought of that. Uh, yo, stop laughing. <laughs> Play solo or with a friend as you mastermind devious outposts full of traps and guards, then gear up for methodical fast-paced combat, raiding other players' creations. Me Maker has been designed for the long term, delivering content to expand your experience and arsenal year-round. Me Maker is available on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. So jumping to the action, we have a lot of replays to double check here. As here through my raids, we have had a lot of raids on our base. Let's see what happens here as using a new cannon as well. Love to see it. Oh no, you may not see it. He's speedrunning it. Oh my god, went straight into the flames. I got burnt to a crisp. This guy is speedrunning with his new tech. Very interesting. He's using the Demolition Cannon in order to use the Arc Barrier to destroy traps around him and make himself completely safe. And then use Force Shield in order to help with his timing with his Arc Barrier, but gets stomped by a Pinson Trap. Unfortunate. And that is why I placed the Pistons there. It's for complete safety. No way, flames will get him again. Oh no, he got flamed again. This is a very well thought system in order to use the new weapon. It's to actually shoot it and use the shield to survive. Very interesting, but dies to another flame trap. Is that plasma cloud going to get him? It does. It fully charged up. When you use the grab hook, it does pause in between. So that plasma cloud from that trap actually activated and killed him on direct impact. He's trying to speed run as quickly as he can. You should just wait for your cooldown. Just wait for it. Oh my god, he's got balls of steel. What is this? He's not terrified by the traps at all, but the laser scared the hell out of him and placed him to the acid trap longer than expected and gets that kill with the acid trap. He's going for the wall climbs. Can he do this in time? Very risky. Very, very risky. He could potentially do this. He can zip across and arc barriers on time. He has to dodge the pistons, which he knows about. He's trying to dodge it now for the timings. And the ravagers get him. And that's why the Ravagers are so useful. This player died 46 times and played the match for 35 minutes. This is going to be insane. Oh my god, that laser. Oh my god, that would have been such an insane laser if it landed. He's breaking the traps, trying to rush through his corridor as quickly as possible. Uses the Arc Barrier to protect himself. Now the problem is his Arc Barrier is on cooldown and he's in this room. He's speed running. He must know what the layout is already. I think he's watched the video prior to this, highlighting the layout, because he ran to the same corridor, which is hard to see initially because all the acid cubes. Interesting. Nice barrier. That trap behind might get him. That kill him from behind? Oh my god, he got killed by the piston trap. So even with knowing the layout, he still got killed by it. Amazing. I think that tilted him for the next 30 minutes in order to get the mission complete. Yeah, he looks like he's tilted. <laughs> He dies to the laser trap in that position because he was a wall hanging the whole time. Oh, wow. So he enters the building. Does he know about the trap layout? He's looking around, trying to figure out what's going on. Laser activates. He melees and then he hears the grenades, but he ready uses his arc bearing and gets killed by the grenade trap. Love to see it. Oh my God. Does he get killed by the, the overflow? He arc bearing just in case. Wow. They nearly got him. No, he dies to the flame trap. He activated it too early and couldn't get out. He was terrified. He should just push into the next room and possibly would have survived. Especially with the melee build. Well done. The plasma cloud gets him. They try and rush that section. If they don't rush it properly, they pretty much die inside cloud every time. Damn, the Ravager got him? No, the flames got him. Oh my god, no. He activated the trap too early because usually he's using his arc barrier to help with the windows between traps to make sure he's safe. And he activated the second trap too early when he pushed the next trap and got himself killed. Unfortunate. This guy spends 10 minutes trying to break this actual space here and realizing it leads to nothing. Now I wonder how he's going to survive this. Because this room here, I actually like the point of entry. 
Because there's so much going on. And I think if I give them additional beams here, the first traps, and they actually bouncing here further, they can kill raiders quite quickly, I believe. Even if they go further back. Oh no! Blocking time. Good. I don't think he can push this. He has to do some crazy movement tech with his spike drive and full shield as well. He's going for it. He realized what room he's in now. Use his actual trap too early. Well done. He can't go back out. He can't go back out. He's stuck. We're going backwards, which is very good. So you have to destroy traps. If you don't, in time, you can't go back. What gets him here? Something catches him off guard. And I'm going to think it's the Ravager. Oh my god, the laser timing. He failed his perfect block. Doesn't die. Nice moves. Well done. But that's going to kill him. He doesn't realize there's a double shot. He does. He puts the force shield down perfectly. Good timing. I think he's got it. Will he arc barry here too early? He didn't even try to arc barry. That's crazy to me. And he just dodged all the traps. Like it's nothing. He's out of there. And now we're back into the base building aspect. Because we've noticed that this base has garnered a lot of kills. And that is great. That's what you want to do. Kill the raiders. Get more currency. And make your base higher, higher prestige. And in a social raid, you can't do that in that dynamic. But thank you, Mace, for raiding it. Now we're doing a upgraded variant of this. Because we've noticed some weaknesses in our base. And I think it's time to change it. Also, during the base, you'll be able to see these floating skulls. Which are all the kill locations that we've received in this map. And as you can see, there's quite a bit. In great locations. And it made me think this point here. Even though it seems like a weak point, And if people realize what it is, they just leave. That it's actually quite good. And the rest of the traps here I do like. Especially with the angles. When it does proc like this that we made on our last build video for this series in part one when we highlight that it just needs a sideline for the lay trap to still activate and be able to kill raiders and i feel like we should improve that in this corridor here and still utilize these bounces and hopefully catch a player off when they try speed run and the way you could activate that is from here i believe we need a platform there to activate and hit this angle so i'm gonna try and do this and hopefully it does work out it activates we're trying to rush through Close enough. Well, this is a hard one to make work. So hopefully now this does activate. It does go through the whole place. It doesn't. So now that should work 100%. It has a sight line. It's now breathing room for it to work. I can make that laser trap because I love lasers. Make sure we utilize them as much as possible. Kind of decent. It's not too bad. Now double check this new choke point I made. I love this new choke point. Wow, what a system. I'm excited to remove this. This area is actually kind of a nuisance for me. And it's creating this weird section where it actually pulls people towards the middle. Where now, maybe I don't want that to be the case because I have my new trap set up that goes through this corridor. And I don't want it to get pulled here at all. Also, I don't mind this choke point that much. Just the instant trap that was here before, it was kind of relevant. But with this setup here, it will get majority of the kills if they're trying to speed run. Because it'll punish that. If they pass this, they enter this room still. Which I do like this room. I thought it was going to change it completely. But after seeing the succession of the room, I feel like I should just empower it more by having Ravagers over here as well. Like, even another Ravager over here would change this uh, pacing even further. Push up, destroy this, destroy that. Run out of bullets. I just realized last second. Ravagers over here. Maybe not the best position for a Ravager. Maybe we can get rid of this and save for after. We can be more useful. Now, this area is kind of interesting. If you don't see this, what happened? Oh my god. Not many safe spots, but it seems quite interesting. I actually kind of like this. What a good setup. There's only one position to be kind of safe, and it's here. Which we could possibly change further by bringing this nook closer. Or placing a trap there to activate. Let's see what we can do. Maybe something like this, and place a hologram right here. So that will activate and activate the trap for a devastating kill. Trap here, though, I might have to change this a bit as well. That one there. I feel like it's maybe just irrelevant. I hope that confuses them and gets them killed in some way. Follow the yellow brick road in some essence. You turn. And hopefully they turn on time. And then now you're blocked in this way, weird way. Where you can't actually move. And everything kills you. I made some god tier trap set up. What is this? And if you push here to destroy this. Spikes will get you. And if you go back as well. You still have a weird position. Where you still die again. I love this trap set up. What a good corridor. And it only takes a couple of traps to make this work as well. It seems like these traps are easy to defeat, but it's actually got a couple kills. So I want to keep it here and not actually change it in any way. Now, this is kind of a dead area, which we found out. I could put something here to activate another grenade trap. 
easily, couldn't I? It's absolutely perfect, and it'll work without any adjustments as well. Because if they speed run it, this will catch them. That works way better. But only two bombs got that far, which makes you think it's not working as well as I wanted to. So, that's obviously because of Eagle Eye. You can reach down there. Let's try. Let's try use Chaos Bombs and give that a go and see what occurs. Now, let's hopefully put another platform there and see what happens. Well done. That's way better. It bounces over here. I'm happy with that. As long as it's able to bounce there, I'm happy. So, as you pass through here, continue through. Okay, you feel like you're safe after hearing all those traps activate and even destroy each other potentially. From there, if you go through, oh, you're like, oh crap, I hear something. It bounces in directly on you. I didn't see it bounce there as much, did I? No, it did. It definitely did bounce. Okay, nice. What we can actually do is maybe change the bounce pad over there. And in my mind, I'm expecting players to rush in, then rush back out, and then not realize, and then die like that. That's what I'm expecting. So they get stuck between this weird trap setup and they can't really move as much. Because everything's just ricocheting in this spot. Which I do like. So I'm going to keep that the way it is. Now this room, the, the only issue there is, is obviously people can go through these cubes like it's nothing. Unless there's traps somewhere. That's the only time it actually comes quite useful. If there's a trap setup or something to stop them from going through the cubes. Which doesn't really work if they're just going through here. Which we see many people going through. They can actually survive without using Arc Barry too. Just going through the whole thing and they'll have enough time to regenerate between each cube before dying. I see this choke point has worked out pretty well. Some to the bowl trap as well, as you see. So I might actually keep this the way it is, even though I don't like it as much. That's a smart option. And get rid of this stuff here, which actually just costs for no reason. Because people just run through, which we've noticed. It's hilarious. And he's even got other players like Ots before. So I might just keep it here just for a laugh. But this piston setup here is still pretty good. So I might even keep that on second wave. Because as you see, you got a couple kills from it. Which I'm happy about. Get rid of this guard. This loop needs to change in some way, so we need to figure out a new playstyle for this. And these ravages I like quite a lot, but I think we should just increase, not their actual range capabilities, but their fire rate. I think it's so important for them. We can put a bomb ejector here, so when people are trying to rush through, and they don't realize that bomb ejector will bounce through, hopefully, this area and try to create some havoc. It's all trying to understand the positioning of the player through each moment to moment. So let's go from the very start and see what we can actually do with this base. Then they try to speed run this. Like, what the hell's going on? Then now you're stuck in this weird area we are just going to die from anything. Because all the timing works together pretty well, as you can see. But it's a one-trick pony. Once they realize, or if they somehow see that trap earlier, and they decide to go back and destroy it, then it's just ready bath me. Then from here, go to this point, then realize the trap set up again. Stuck in this little nook. Delays you until they push up further. Then you destroy that. You want to go for loot? Oh wait, bold trap. Potentially gets a cheeky kill there, potentially. If not, we can make something else happen there. Actually, maybe just ramp this up. And take with the bowl trap and this trap completely. I could potentially do that. Or just keep that trap there in case it bounces in if people push in. And this trap could change. It could be a whole different setup. Then we have this over here. Push forward. That trap is already exploded from the grenade trap, most likely. From earlier. So I think we didn't activate the grenade trap. Push through. Destroy that. Try a speed run. Then realize, oh crap, this base is kind of nuts. And then, oh no. I used my Arcberry too early and died from the bomb injector. Love seeing it. Then pushing through. Double checking, we can see how these are like all activate. Look at the ref uh, deflections. Oh my god, it goes to that room. That is so good. So good. So it's not only just stopping here, it's going further the whole way. As you see, that's kind of crazy. That is very crazy. But I'm dying to lasers continuously. They start pushing through. They're destroying stuff. They find a little nook. It's like, oh crap. Bounce out. Now try to go through. Grenades get them. You know what? That's well worth it. That is well worth it. I love that. This place have to dedicate to jump down to get the loot. They have to double check every area as it's going up. Then they will jump down here to pick up the loot. And the only thing I would really want to do is place spy trap there and put self-destruct. That will catch some players off guard. So one's about detection. The other second one is the actual one that's trying to kill more than anything. Put a spy trap here. So players don't see it. And they'll catch them off guard. You need to put a self-destruct here. So players don't camp the location. So that safe nook is not safe anymore. Maybe the final stretch isn't as important to me. I think so. I think I'm just going to try to reduce this. In order to put the traps into other locations. Where I feel like they're more optimal. To guarantee more kills. I don't really care about killing people here at the gem mat. I'd rather kill them earlier. To make sure they never reach the gem mat. And I believe you can even time these patrols. By timing when you want to actually control them. And waiting that location. And then pressing... The button in order to move forward. So I've timed it for around 25 seconds, I believe. 
So he's able to pass through the space. But I do think changing the location of these two warriors to higher locations is a smarter choice. So they don't get killed all at once. And they also can detect at a higher point. And now this is the final iteration of our base for this video. As we highlight through our base going through here, the trap set up with the lasers and the grenades activating in the same instance as you saw for part one. Great C. Try to dodge this, destroy that, destroy this, destroy this. Collect that, follow the path. Hopefully that's what players do. That's what we try to put the arrows down here. This activates and maybe they want to shoot at the same time or push through. They realize pushing through was maybe the worst decision as things will kill you as they persist through multiple instances. And then we have this trap set up here. Quite nice. Kills the warmonger. Does that classify as bloodlust now? That is going to be very interesting. This might be a very unique scenario when it doesn't happen too often. But if it does, we have to change the warmonger functionality. Then destroy that trap. Go over here. Collect the resources. Watch out. Self-destruct. Try to defend yourself. Nice. Then continue through here. Main pathway. Activate setup. Try to dodge it. And realize how far it goes is actually insane. Glad to see it. Destroy that trap. Continue through. And if you try speed run, that grenade trap from earlier would activate as well. And if you don't, and you go through this point, you have to deal with this trap layout now. So there's grenades from this side, which will kill you, and also land here too. But there's also the point when these lasers will stop you from going further away, as you see. Look at that. You would die if you stand there. Because you think you're safe for a second and go back further and further and realize you can get killed. And if you go through this and destroy this trap, then try to go back inside, you'll die too. Love that. Further going through this, destroying this trap. Any activation from the Ravager there? No. So we know that isn't the best optimal position. I will change that. That is very annoying to deal with. Kill that. Go up here. Not safe here at all. Everything's activating, as you see. And even here, you're not safe. Actually, I might keep it there. I actually like it. Then from here, watch out for the grenades. Set up again. Wow, it's just so much death. And you can't now use one grenade to kill them now. You have to chuck three separate grenades to kill all these areas off of Ravages. Okay, nice work. Protect myself there. Double shot. So if I didn't know that, I would die there. Trap setups. Piston. Going through, going through. Further and further. Try to survive. Realizing that if I don't move quickly, you die. Cut the gym at. And at this point, you're pretty much safe. This pistol trap right over here will squash you if you try to speed run out of here. From here, there should be a warmonger, but the warmonger seems to have some difficulty, so I'll work on it in my own time to make sure it works properly. Okay, put it closer to the point of death. We'll make sure that the warmonger that chases you initially is actually activates the bloodlust of the second one. Trap there as well. Pass you through. You're pretty much good here at this point. There's nothing else that can really catch you out. That guy died there, sadly. And getting out of the base. Make sure we're going the right way. And you're completed. But many players will die to this. Because I feel like it would be hard to understand what's occurring. Without the knowledge that I've given in this video already. This guy not activating. we got to fix him. And make sure he activates at the same time as that warmong over there activates. Or when the Ravagers go into combat. This guy comes out through a invisible cube. Which I think would be quite fun to do so. So we'll figure it out. But that was my time highlighting my laser base, the second iteration of it, and going through replays in order to become a better player and a better builder at the same time. So when other raiders try to encounter this base, they will have difficulties surely trying to survive. And that is the goal. Make sure you get more kills, more resources, and claim those benefits to make sure you're able to prestige your base and build upon it further and further. But mates, tell me your picks of thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you think about this episode? I'd love to know. And as always, mates, it's been a pleasure. And also check out this video here too for more content.